voltage measurements with differential amplifiers. Hello ladies, look at your circuit. Now look at my circuit. Back to your circuit. And back to my circuit. Sadly, yours isn't mine, but it could be my circuit if you stop using outdated technology and start using a differential amplifier. Look down. Back up. What are you looking at? Back at me. I have it. You're looking at your current results. Look again. They are now discernible, clinically useful results. Anything is possible if you start using a differential amplifier. Now, to try to explain everything not covered by this mock advert, which is why I have to try not to bore you. Why am I talking about differential amplifiers? Often, when taking measurements of potential differences, the signal is not pure. This means there is noise or background information that we don't want to be looking at. This could severely reduce how clear our results are and even prevent any conclusions from being drawn at all. So we want to minimise this so-called noise. This noise can be extremely unhelpful in a hospital. For example, in electroencephalography, or EEG, the noise, which is the bit we don't want, is substantially larger than the signal, which is the bit we do. For example, a normal result would be a signal of about 10 microvolts, but a noise amplitude of about 10 volts. Hopefully, minimising the noise will leave us with only our signal, the bit we want. Due to the inverse square law, our signal is weakened. The greater the distance it has to travel to where it is received, the weaker it is, especially if the signal is an action potential in the human body, which has to be recorded at the surface. Not only does signal diminish through flesh, but in a hospital there is a lot of interference from other machinery, and you cannot always be in a lead bunker to try to reduce the interference in noise. This is a problem because doctors need to be able to see what is going on. So we need a device that will minimise noise and amplify the signal. No surprise here, we need a differential amplifier. How is this achieved, or what are the mechanisms involved? Well, I'll try to be as simplistic as possible to avoid boredom. We have an input electrode, for example attached to the flesh, one reference electrode, also attached to the flesh, and one grounded electrode. This reference electrode is important, as it is the main step in reducing noise like the first line in defence. Most noise and interference which is coming from nearby machinery should be picked up not just by the input electrode but also by the reference electrode and so by differentiating between the input electrode and the reference electrode hopefully a lot of the noise is removed from the signal. This is a simple diagram of a differential amplifier where V1 is the input electrode, VR is the reference electrode Ground is obviously the ground electrode, and V out is the output of the differential amplifier. This is a differential amplifier equation where V naught, V1, and V R are just before. AD is the differential gain, and AC is the common mode gain. Ideally, AC, the common mode gain, will be zero, meaning almost no noise is pre present in the output V naught. This would be a perfect differential amplifier. However, this is very rarely the case. So far, so what? Well, we have looked at differential bit, but what about the amplification bit? Well, this bit is simple. The differential gain, AD, defines how much the, the signal is amplified digitally. Now, for a bit of technical jargon often used. The Common Mode Rejection Ratio, or CMMR. This is nothing new, but is simply the ratio between the differential gain, AD, and the common mode gain, AC. The Common Mode Rejection Ratio is measured in decibels, and it is often used to describe a particular differential amplifier. The common mode rejection ratio increases as the common mode gain decreases. So idealistically, if the common mode gain approaches zero, then the common mode rejection ratio tends to infinity. Obviously, this is unrealistic, and most differential amplifiers used in hospitals have a common mode gain rejection ratio of 90 decibels. This corresponds to a ratio of differential gain to common mode gain of about 32,000. So the signal is 32,000 times the amplitude of the noise. So in terms of taking measurements at the surface of the human body, if we have a high common mode rejection ratio, this means that the results should be fairly clear in graphical form to a clinician. This means better analysis can be done on the results, and so a better diagnosis of the patient can be achieved. 
This is very useful in a hospital for techniques such as electrocardiography, electroencephalography, magnetoencephalography, and electrical impedance tomography. Thank you for watching. I hope this video is informative and didn't put you to sleep.